Hey guys, it's Phil coming at you with another video, and today I'm going to be going over practice questions. I know I haven't done a video like that in a very, very long time, but I'm doing it today, and I don't do them very often because it takes me a decent amount of time to write questions. Plus, I'm writing questions for the study groups that I do, <laughs> as well as the acronym study groups and everything, so it takes a decent amount of time for me to do that, but I'm back with a practice questions video, and I know I haven't been doing a lot of videos, but I'm trying to balance podcasts and these videos all that stuff and all that but just know that i appreciate every single one of you guys and how much repping and rocking you do with me it does not go unnoticed and i appreciate every time that you like a video share a video share my name with somebody it blows me away guys and in the meantime since i did my last video 46 people passed their exams which is mind-blowing you guys rock and they are as follows we have jeff h mike l Sean R, Felicia L, Doug H, Brianna H, Christy T, Louise P, I N R, Jamie J, Brianne C, Lisa W, Deandra P, Celise G, Diane S, Antonia T, Joyce B, Jerry G, Dana M, Victoria G, Steph C, Nicole H, Riley A, Bianca R, Jody L, Chelsea H, Mariah. F, Alicia D, Pam J, Adrian C, Angie L, Janet P, Claudine P, Monica B, Kim J, Beth S, Lauren S, Tanisha B, Tiffany T, Teresa P, Catherine D, Alicia L, Tracy S, Shauna K, and Sandra F. And if you want me to share your name as well, and want to let me know that you pass, send me an email at B E R D A. 24 at gmail.com and that's the best way to get a hold of me guys and sometimes it does take me a little bit of time to get back to you guys but i do get back to every single person that emails me so keep repping and rocking with me on that and something i've been hearing a lot about is phil i'm studying it's not going how i want it to either you pat like are about to take your exam you just took it and it didn't go how you wanted it to or you're having self-doubt around it do not let the small details of getting a question wrong not feeling prepared or like what you're doing is not worthwhile, get in the way from you actually being the best possible version of yourself. I see it every single day and I hear it more and more. I feel like I don't think I can actually handle this or I can't do this. But please keep believing in yourself. Keep pushing and doing what you feel is right and necessary to get the job done. There's no one way to pass this exam or accomplish a goal that you have in mind because it's your unique process and your unique way of processing information and analyzing and soaking things in so do not question who you are based on the fact that someone else is telling you what you should be doing within your situation because you know yourself better than anyone possibly could and with that also embrace every second that you can get within this process and I don't mean that like buckle down do 100% of the things that you have to but embrace the time in whatever possibility it looks like for you. So a question I get all the time is, Phil, how much time should I actually study? And I always, always, always give the same response is, what would your study be best in your current situation in life with everything that you got going on? And it also means, how much time do you need to study in order for you to retain something? And what do I mean by that? Me personally, I can only study for certain amounts of time at a time before I start going in every single direction. So about 30 minutes is what I can study and actually retain the thing that I'm actually looking at. So if I studied for an hour, I, I'd be better off only studying for that 30 minutes because that additional 30 minutes, I'm on my phone, I'm all over the place, and I'm not actually benefiting from that time that I put forth. So any time that you're putting directed towards a goal or towards this exam, if that's what you're looking at, is has to be beneficial for your situation at that given time. So if you're putting in more time than you're actually going to benefit from, you may be quote unquote wasting time. And it's okay if you're putting in additional time and you're doing things on your phone and stuff, but you have to be honest with yourself and say, this is what I need to do in order to retain and study. So if other people told me I need to be reading or doing all these other things on these extra side things, avoid doing that. And if you're doing that and trying to make it work for you, always understand what's your learning style and where you've been in order to map out the path that you're currently going to be on. And if you are feeling frustrated because you're getting questions wrong or you're feeling resistance in whatever goal that you're experiencing, keep pushing. You are not going to master something immediately and you're not going to possibly always get 
the correct thing or do the right thing the first time, the second time, or even the third time, etc. Why? Because each attempt is further and getting you better off to be in a better position to get the goal that you currently want within your situation. And it is super frustrating. You put in a lot of effort and not getting the result that you want. But effort does not always equal result. It's what you put forth during that effort that could prepare you to get the result in the future from what you're looking at. So I just wanted to allude and get some direction towards that because I hear it more and more every single day is, I don't feel like I can do this and what I'm doing is not actually paying off. And why isn't it paying off? Because every time that I put effort in the past, it paid off. And that may be the case, but this situation is different than any situation that you have ever been in because you have not been in your spot that you're in right now ever before and you won't ever be in that spot. So embrace where you're at right now and build upon it rather than tearing yourself down and having to restart from where you are currently at. But let's get inside the questions, guys. If you're interested in tutoring, I do still offer that. So feel free to reach out to me at berda24 at gmail.com. My schedule does book out two to two and a half weeks in advance. Or you can schedule your own session in the description of this video. Or you can type in the link in the box, but you can go into the description of this video, click it, and it'll pop it up. You select your time zone and schedule and all of that stuff. If you're interested in my Sunday study groups, the next topics are 2-2, two -two, ethics, 2-9, two group and family therapy, and that's going to be a special group for me because that's my birthday, so I'm probably going to do a special of you buy a session, you can bring your friend in with you during that session because I want that packed out to celebrate and give back as a gift on my birthday. 2 16, Attachment Theory, Parenting Styles, and Maslow's. 223, Maslow's, Stages of Grief and Conditionings. And 3 1, Freudian Theory. And those are always Sundays from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And I just say it ends at 9 because that's typically when the content and the practice questions end. But I do a question and answer segment afterwards of that that you can stay as long as you want. Like they typically go until 10 or 10.30. And if you want information about my study groups, my email again is berda24 at gmail.com. And if you want to follow me on Facebook, it's fill in the gaps. I typically offer free study group admissions for people that comment on the videos and stuff like that. Plus, keeps you up to date of what I'm thinking. Plus, gets you episodes of my podcast. And if you're interested on my podcast, search fill in the gaps on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher. And let's get to the questions, guys. So question one, a 26-year-old lesbian female comes to a social worker and a family agency to discuss her options around adopting a child. The social worker does not feel comfortable with lesbian couples having children. What is the best thing for the social worker to do to help the woman? A, provide information to the woman around adopting a child. B, refer the woman to another social worker for assistance. C, seek supervision around the social worker's discomfort with helping the woman. D, ask a woman how the social worker can best help the woman with adopting a child. Okay, so we have a 26-year-old lesbian female. We are a social worker in a family agency, and she wants to discuss her options around adopting a child, and the social worker does not feel comfortable with lesbian couples having children. What is the best thing for us to do in this situation? And this is going to be an application question. Why? Because it's a client situation and we have to react in the best possible way that we know how and we have to meet this lady where she's at in some way, shape, or form. So we'll utilize the acronym and break that down. So provide information to the woman around adopting a child. Educate why we're providing her information within her situation to better equip her in her process. Refer the woman to another social worker for assistance. Refer why we're shipping her to another social worker outside of our care. Seek supervision around the wo social worker's discomfort with helping the woman intervene. Why? Because we are doing an action to help progress the therapeutic process by processing our own situation and ask the woman how the social worker can best help her with adopted child feelings. Why? Because it's getting her direct account of what she's going through within her situation so that way we can understand what options she actually means. So at this time, we have a 26-year-old female family agency wants to adopt a child and we do to f we don't feel comfortable doing so so at this given moment we're going to rule out b because we're not going to be like all right so you want to come to us for options i need to ship you to someone else 
that could possibly help you with that because if we refer her out in this given situation she's gonna say why because i came to you your family agency and you're supposed to be able to help me what's the issue here and we don't want to disclose hey i don't really like helping lesbian people get adoptions bad moves bad vibes why because we never intersect our biases inside of the therapeutic process to impede this woman from getting what she wants which is assistance from us at our agency we're also going to rule out seeking supervision and you may be wondering well why wouldn't i seek supervision that means that we're leaving the room with this woman and saying all right supervisor what should i do at this given time bad moves we could do that later and process our situation but we need to help the person in the moment of what they're looking at at this given moment because if we leave the room talk to the supervisor and then come back and provide the information she's gonna say what was the big deal i'm here family agency you should know this and i came to you for assistance what's the big deal so that's going to be a barrier within the therapeutic situation in some way shape or form so we can either a provide information to the woman around adopting the child or ask the woman how the social worker can best help her with adopting the child so we're also going to rule out a here because yes, she came for options around adopting the children, but we don't entirely know what that means. Like what options does she want information or assistance with? Because there are many different options when adopting or what options has she exhausted prior? So that way we don't just bump butter and say, here's a ton of information, go and do your situation on your own because you came to us for assistance. So we need to help navigate the system in some way, shape or form. But we need to know how that we can actually do that with and for the woman. So the correct answer here is D, ask the woman how the social worker can best help her with adopting a child. So next question. Question two. A social worker is working with a 28-year-old man who reports having episodes of depression. The man reports that he recently lost his job due to calling off too many times. The man denies having any intent of wanting to kill himself, but he is not happy with his current situation. The man reports having previous struggles with an eating disorder and at times will experience relapses in regards to it. The man believes the social worker can help him get back on track. What should the social worker do next? A. Gather more information on the man's mental health history. B. Develop a safety plan with the man. C. Connect the man with employment services. D. Provide the man a list of available resources that he can utilize to address the various presenting problems. So we're a social worker working with the 28 year old man he reports having episodes of depression the man reports he recently lost his job due to calling off too many times and the man reports denying any intent of wanting to kill himself but he's just not happy with his situation the man reports having previous struggles with an eating disorder and at times will have struggles in regards to it or relapses and the man believes that we can help him get back on track so what should the social worker do next in this situation and this one's going to be an application of question again why because we are going to help address the client's situation and meet him where he's at in some way shape or form whatever that looks like at this given moment so we're going to utilize the acronym once again to get the answer in this situation so a gather more information on the man's mental health history assess why because we're gathering clinical data about his situation not just his direct account and feelings but actual clinical objective data develop a safety plan with the man so we can either have safety or intervene depending on how we want to look at the situation so we'll parse that out a little bit later connect the man with employment services facilitate why because if when we facilitate we're connecting the man with another professional at the agency to help him but he does not leave our care so the facilitate f equals friends so we're facilitating that connection but he's ultimately coming back to work with us from provide the man a list of available resources that he can utilize to address the various presenting problems advocate why because we are advocating on behalf of him by providing them the needed services information and services but he's ultimately going to be doing the action with him for himself so we have a 28 year old man reports of depression he has recently lost his job due to calling off too many times. He denies having any intent to want to kill himself, but he is not happy with his situation. The man reports having previous struggles with an eating disorder and at times will experience relapses in regards to it. What do we need to do in this situation? So at this given moment, 
We're going to rule out employment services. Yeah, he came in and said that he lost his job because he was calling off too much, but that's not what he came to directly for help with. He's saying that he has episodes of depression and he's relapsing regarding an eating disorder and wants to get back on track within his situation. We're also going to rule out develop a safety plan and say it's not a safety and it's going to be an intervene. And we withdrew the safety kid category because he denies having any intent of wanting to kill himself. He's just not happy. So we can't jump to conclusions and say, all right, the first step to get back on track is develop a safety plan because you're in danger. He did not say that. So you can never add things into the situation or to the question and still get the right answer because the question will always give you the answer regardless of what you want to put in that situation at that given time. So we can either A, gather more information on the man's mental health history or provide the man a list of available resources that he can utilize to address the various presenting problems in his given situation. So just like the previous question, and I never recommend comparing questions, but the same pro thought process can be followed in this given situation as well. So he's coming with a ton of issues, but we cannot jump to conclusions of what this person needs at this given time. So we can't just go, all right, you need all of these resources because he did not say exactly what he wanted to work on. He was vague about it and I need help getting back on track. What does that mean? So it'd be awesome to give him all these pieces of information, but do not jump to conclusions and jump to action way too fast because yes, we want to mobilize and help the person to do all the things that can help them, but we need to gather more information, what he means by experiencing relapses in regards to his eating disorder and what particular eating disorder is he talking about what does a relapse look like and does it put him at danger because if it does put him at danger maybe we do have to develop a safety plan but not around suicidal ideations but more around the self-harm of what the eating disorder could be bringing about but we never want to assume anything because assuming makes a butt out of you and me. So the correct answer here would be to gather more information on the main situation before jumping to conclusions and creating a bad situation for him as well as us. Because if we go in here telling this guy what he needs for his situation, it's not going to end well. So that's how we'd look at that question in particular. Question three. A male social worker in a private practice is meeting with a woman for the first session after her intake. The woman is currently going through a divorce and would like to improve her mood. The social worker is trying to gather information from the woman and she appears guarded. The woman started telling the social worker that she does not need therapy or any assistance from a man. Which of the social worker do first to help the woman? A. Agree with the woman that she does not need therapy to help establish rapport with the woman. B, inform the woman that she does not know him and that he's been through a divorce prior to help establish rapport with the woman. C, explore the potential counter-transference and refer the woman to a family or female therapist. D, explore the woman's perspective to better understand her stance to better treat her. So at this given moment, we are a male social worker and we're in a private practice. And our client is a woman and it is our first session after the intake. So we don't entirely know this woman, but it is our first time meeting her after the intake. She's currently going through a divorce and would like to improve her mood, so she has goals in mind already. The social worker is trying to gather information from the woman, but she appears guarded, and the woman's starting to tell the social worker she does not need therapy or assistance from a man. What should the social worker do first? to best help the woman. So this is going to be an application question, why we have a client scenario and we need to respond to it in the best way possible. And this one's going to be a little dicier because there are multiple layers to it, but let's break it down utilizing the acronym nonetheless and then explore and compare it back to the question to see how well it connects. So agree with the woman that she does not need therapy to help establish rapport with the woman, intervene, and even though it looks like we're trying to establish for the rapport we're doing it in an odd way because we're saying you don't need therapy but let's help establish rapport so that we can work together because at the end of the day she just said we don't need therapy and you're like you're absolutely right so inform the woman she does not know him and that he's been through a divorce prior to help establish rapport with the woman so this one's going to be an intervene and i'm going to add a bad move in here because this is almost trying to sell the lady like 
I've been through a divorce, so I know exactly where you're at, and I know what's going on in your situation. Bad moves, bad vibes. C, explore the potential counter-transference and refer the woman to a female therapist. So this one's going to be an assess. Even though it says refer within the situation, it's ultimately an assess. Why? Because we're exploring information in order to equip us to refer her out. Explore the woman's perspective to better understand her stance and to better treat her feelings. Why? Because it's getting her direct perspective and situation of what's going on at this given time. So we have we are a male social worker, private practice, woman for the first session after the intake. She just went through her divorce. She's trying to improve her mood. We're trying to gather information. She's closed off and not providing information and says, I do not feel like I need therapy or assistance specifically from a man. So at this given moment, we're going to rule out being informer that she doesn't know him and that he's been through a divorce prior to help establish a report because that comment is about us and therapy is not about us. It's about connecting with the client to better mobilize and help them in their situation of what they're currently going through. So to tell her like, I've been through a divorce. I know exactly what's going on. Let me help you. She's not worried about that. <laughs> and that's not something that we should be doing. We're not trying to sell clients for us to help them. We're just mobilizers and being there and equipping that person what could best help them within their current situation. So we're also going to rule out A because again, A is an odd answer of like, you're absolutely right. You don't need therapy, but let's start building a relationship so we can start working together. So that way I can convince you again that you need therapy specifically from me. So the other answers that we have are explore the potential counter-transference and refer the woman to a female therapist or D, explore the woman's perspective to better understand her stance to better treat her. So again, C, exploring the potential counter-transference. Counter-transference is again us exploring what is potentially going into the situation that's counter to the progress and then referring her to a female therapist. But C is assuming that it's specifically because we're a man that she does not want to work with us and that there's counter-transference within the current situation. That's not what is going on or what the question is saying. So we're going to rule that out because there's no evidence of counter-transference and that she would better work with a female therapist because we had seen this lady prior and did her intake and then she came in for an appointment. It's like, nope, not working with you anymore. So the correct answer is going to be explore the woman's perspective to better understand her stance, to better treat her, because what changed and what about that dynamic is no longer the same as it was during the intake assessment. So we always want to start with where she's at. And yes, she doesn't want assistance from a man, but we don't assume that she wants to work with a female therapist either, because that's adding to the question. And every time you add the question, you change the question, which ultimately could change the potential answer to being incorrect. So staying within the question is very, very important with being able to get the correct answer. So question four, a social worker in an outpatient clinic is meeting with a 35-year-old female who presents with excessive anxiety around people leaving her. The woman reports that in a previous relationship that she was in that her husband would yell at her every time she left the house, which made her lose all of her friends. Which concept of operant conditioning best describes the husband's behavior? So we are a social worker in an outpatient clinic. We're meeting with the 35-year-old female. And the presenting issue is excessive anxiety around people wanting to leave her. The woman reports that in a previous relationship, so the relationship is over, she was, she was getting yelled at by her husband every time she left the house, which made her lose all of her friends. Which concept of operant conditioning best describes the husband's behavior. So this one's going to be a recall question because we have to be able to recall the specific theory that it's alluding to and know the different concepts and the workings of what that situation is. So you either know what the concepts and you know what they mean, or <laughs> you're kind of a sitting duck and may have to word associate within the current situation. But let's break it down and in the best terms that I know how and the easiest way that we can navigate and teach this concept. So positive, every time it says positive, we're adding something. So we'll just put that for both positives. And the negative is taking something. So an easy way to remember that is P 
is either putting or adding something just so that way it's congruent so p equals putting something into the situation and then n is nabbing or taking out of the situation so let's add nabbing in there as well and then within the situation we also have an easy way to break down the different components so R for reinforcement is going to be to increase or raise the likelihood of a behavior in the future. So within positive and negative reinforcement, they both have the same interworkings of the situation. And then P within punishment is to prevent the situation from happening in the future. So preventing the situation from happening in the future. So within this, we just need to fill in the gaps of what we're actually trying to do. So positive is going to be adding something positive or desirable adding or putting something positive or desirable into the situation to increase or raise the likelihood of behavior happening in the future so positive putting something in reinforcement to increase the likelihood of it happening so positive put in or adding something and since we want to prevent the situation from happening, it's going to be undesirable. So we're going to be putting or adding something undesirable into the situation to prevent the situation from happening in the future. Why? Because we do not want it to, to replicate. So... We're going to be putting something undesirable because if something puts something that you don't desire into your situation, you're not going to do that behavior anymore. And then negative, which is taking something out of the situation, and we want to raise the likelihood of the behavior. So we're going to be adding or taking something desirable, or no, undesirable. Why? Because we want to raise the likelihood. Why? Because if someone takes something you don't like, you're going to likely want to promote and put yourself into the situation. So Navin are taking something undesirable out of the situation to increase or raise the likelihood of the behavior happening in the future. And then negative or negative is Navin are taking punishment because we want to prevent it from happening. So we're Navin are taking something desirable out of the situation to prevent the situation from happening in the future. And I know it kind of looks kind of jumbled, but let me go over it really, really fast so that way we can get on the same page again. So positive is putting something or adding something into the situation. Reinforcement is to increase or raise the likelihood of it happening. So positive reinforcement is putting or adding something desirable into the situation to increase or raise the likelihood of a positive behavior happening in the future. Positive punishment Positive is putting or adding something into the situation. And since we want to reduce the likelihood, we are going to put something undesirable into the situation. And then negative is going to be nabbing or taking something out of the situation to increase the likelihood because reinforcement is to raise the likelihood. And then negative punishment and negative is nabbing or taking something out of the situation. And then punishment, we want to reduce the likelihood of it happening in the future. So we are going to take something desirable because if something takes something that you desire, then you're going to be less likely to do that behavior in the future because you want to keep the things that you enjoy. So let's compare this back to the question. So we're a social worker, outpatient clinic, meeting with a 35-year-old female, presents with excessive anxiety around the people leaving her. She reports that in a previous relationship that her husband would yell at her so yelling is adding something into the situation every time she left the house, which made her lose all of her friends, which concept of operant conditioning. So 
we're going to rule out negative punishment and negative reinforcement. Why? Because negative is taking something out of this situation, but the husband, because it's focused on the husband, the husband is adding something into the situation. Why? Because he's yelling. Yelling is a behavior which is inserting something into the situation. And positives are putting something into the situation. So now we have to ask ourselves, is he putting something desirable in the situation so that way she wants to leave the house more? Or is he adding something that she doesn't desire to prevent her from leaving the house in the future? So we're going to rule out A because it's not desirable because she's mad and worried about him leaving, but she also lost her friends in the long run. So he was adding something undesirable into the situation, such as the yelling to prevent her from leaving the house. So the correct answer is B, positive punishment. So that is how we look at that question in particular. Question five, a social worker who has been researching the impact that parental drug use can have on their offspring is asked by a social worker in a nearby town to join their community incentive. The purpose of the incentive is to provide resources to single parents that are at risk for being homeless to reduce the rates of homelessness. During a follow-up focus group with key stakeholders, one of the stakeholders feels like the task force has been discriminated against different groups of people in the community. What should the social worker do first in this situation? A, collect data in the community to help address any discrimination that is occurring in the community. B, gather feedback from other stakeholders in the focus group to amend the current incentive to better fit the community's needs. C, propose that the task force and stakeholders amend the objectives of the program to ensure they are adequately assisting the community. D, provide information and the data to the members of the community to ensure that the incentive is meeting the community's needs. So we are a social worker that has been researching the impact of parental drug use that can have on their offspring. We are asked by a social worker in a nearby town to join their community incentive. And the purpose of the incentive is to provide resources to single parents that are at risk for being homeless to reduce the rates of homelessness. So during a follow-up focus group with key stakeholders, one of the stakeholders feels like the task force has been discriminated against different people in the community. What should the social worker do first in this situation? And this is going to be a reasoning question. Why? Because it's kind of an ethical consideration or research-based consideration that we have to come up with a solution to at this given moment. So in order to also answer this question we have to understand what a focus group is and a focus group is where we gather people together that has a common focus or people come up with multiple different topics that they want to discuss and we hone in and develop a focus for what we want to be focusing on and we also have to keep in mind that the key stakeholders and task force are at this meeting so they are technically going to be the client or the situation that is involved. So A, collect data in the community to help address any discrimination that is occurring in the community would be incorrect. Why? Because that is where we're going to be like, all right, guys, I'm going to peace out and get into this community, start collecting data and figure out if there's any issues with discrimination in the community. That would require us to A, know where every single person where that is involved within the study of aka these single parents are located and get their perspective and say, do you feel like you're being discriminated against in any way, shape, or form? Which would require us to have our cape on and want to save everybody. Bad moves, bad vibes. So we can either gather information from other stakeholders in the focus group to amend the current incentive to better fit it, or propose that the task force and stakeholders amend the objectives of the program to ensure they're adequately assisted in the community. Because we're also going to rule out D. Because we're not going to provide information to the members of the meeting, aka the task force and the stakeholders, and show them, hey, our incentive is meeting the goals. So regardless of what this person says, we just need to bunk that because we're hitting our results that we're looking for. Bad moves because then we're invalidating the entire meeting, and then there's a disconnect because stakeholders are people that are involved within the situation and are invested in it and are being affected by it and are advocating them based on the fact of what the community wants at that given time. So we can either gather from 
or feedback from only the other stakeholders in the meeting, or we can propose, which means suggest, that the task force and stakeholders both amend the objectives, and objectives are the interventions or ways that you're going to accomplish the particular goals. And if we look back at the question, to provide resources to single mothers or single parents at risk for being homeless to reduce the rate of homelessness. So that is going to be our goal. So we can change the way that we're delivering them to ensure that we're adequately addressing it. Or we're going to say, let's amend the entire incentive program and refocus everything based on the fact of the feedback of one person in this situation. So for that reason, we're going to rule out B because it only included the stakeholders. And this is a meeting of the task force and the stakeholders and the task force within a program development or initiative is to carry out the particular task within this community. So we want both the people that are delivering it and the other people that are invested in it to come together, be on the same page and make sure that we're meeting the needs of both people because we're both invested and we want to make sure that things are going on. And the key emphasis is on propose, which means we're not entirely going to have to do it. We're just saying, hey, do you guys think this is a good idea? Because this is the point of view of this person, but what is everyone else's point of view? So that way you can be on the same page of a collective. So the corrective an answer here is going to be C, propose that the task force and stakeholders amend the objectives of the program to ensure they're adequately assist in the community. And that's why it's important to not just know the specifics of things, but being able to apply it to particular questions and scenarios in, in throughout the exam. And again, if you're interested in tutoring and want me to direct you through this process and get you better acquainted to break down questions and analyze things or focus on particular topics of interest, my email again is berda24 at gmail.com or click the link in the description. Click my schedule and schedule a session for yourself. And my next study groups on Sundays are as follows, 2-2. Two, two, Ethics 29, Group and Family Therapy 216, Attachment Therapy, Parenting Styles and Maslow's 223, Maslow's Stages of Grief and Conditionings 31, Freudian Theory, and those again are 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. My email for that is berda24 at gmail.com. My Facebook page is Fill in the Gaps. And my podcast is filling the gaps on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. From the bottom of my heart, guys, I appreciate all the support and everything that you guys do with and for me. Hit the like button on this video, which is the thumbs up button down below to show your appreciation. Comment down below what you thought about this video. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And hit the little bell icon next to that to get an email every time I upload a video. I appreciate every single one of you guys. I love you guys. Take care, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.